Hello, good people, and welcome to Central Florence. In this exciting and rather revealing video, we're going to be diving into how we created a transformative budget renovation for a client in a small but fabulously located apartment. We'll be breaking down the property purchase price, total renovation costs, and the ultimate resale price of this little piece of Florentine history. Keep watching to the end of the video to see just how far a small budget can get you in the heart of one of the most culturally rich cities in Italy. We'll begin with the renovation itself of this tiny 50 square meters or 550 square feet apartment, consisting of a bedroom, a bathroom, a lounge, a terrace, and a kitchenette. And from the outset, we knew that we didn't have the budget to do any invasive works, and so we had to work with the tiles that came with the apartment. The space that we inherited was actually brand new, despite it being finished to a standard that I might expect to see in, say, the early 90s. But because it was new, we were able to pull out the oven and the hob and resell them, which actually funded about half the total cost of the replacement kitchen from IKEA. In place of the oven, we added a fridge with an internal freezer compartment, and we made the new porcelain sink sit on the countertop, allowing the space below to be fully usable as a cabinet. Above, we added a microwave oven with grill functionality, along with another storage cabinet. Because the budget didn't allow us to make any new electrical trenches in the walls, we solved the problem of how to bring power to the upper cabinet by pegging an extension cable along the outer edge of the tiles and then used some decorative cornicing to hide it, which had the bonus effect of enhancing the finish of these otherwise quite simple tiles. In the end, only they and the tap remained from the old kitchenette. With a portable electric hob hidden away in the cabinets, we'd on the whole created a more elegant and spacious kitchenette that had even more functionality than before, particularly since previously there was no fridge at all. Moving swiftly on, and before we get to the more exciting areas of the flat, allow me to give an honourable mention to this little desk moment that we created using leftover wood and a stool that we found for sale, turning this otherwise unused area into a productive space. And as hinted by that view, up next is the real showstopper of this entire project. Now the terrace area had the greatest transformation of all, largely because culturally within Italy this type of internal courtyard or chiostrina is conceived of as more of a utility rather than a livable space. We wanted to change all that, and we began by selling the plastic placeholder furniture that came with the property to buy two key antique pieces that would anchor the entire design. One was a marble-topped bistro table, while the other was a Victorian side table, perhaps not very impressive on their own, but this was only the beginning. After giving the side table a glow-up, we thought it worthwhile to stretch the budget to buy some ornate brass taps and a brown marble sink, that whilst costly, was still found for a bargain at a local closing down sale. The end look was entirely bespoke, but at a fraction of the cost getting it made by a third party. Next up was to install the air conditioning unit, the cables of which had already been predisposed by the previous renovators, so we only needed to budget for the machines and installation. This new eyesore actually inspired us to extend the wooden framing of the space not only from above, but also to create a green partition wall to separate the terrace from this new utility corner hidden behind it. The final trick was to hide the exposed gas boiler behind a cabinet made by some local carpenters, which we finished off with a decorative flourish thanks to that cornicing once again. And in the end, we also added a workout corner to maximize the remaining unused space. And in all, this made the terrace the new gravitational center of the home, always drawing you in and in effect creating a second lounge or dining room for most of the months of the year when Florence has temperate weather. In effect, this little apartment now had one of the most valuable commodities in any crowded city, a private urban oasis. Moving on now to the final rooms of the apartment, which while being far simpler to decorate, were no less dramatic in their transformations. I am perhaps most proud of the work done here in the lounge though, where we turned a pokey little room into a spacious five-seater hub of relaxation. Despite its small size, it had become a much more social and inviting space than what we'd inherited, 
and it was all down to the clever placement of the mirror. But getting to that in a moment, our budget was once again nicely infused with the selling off of the brand new but really quite characterless sofa, console table, and cabinetry. And immediately following this, the clearing of the far wall provided the greatest opportunity for a quick and high impact transformation, where we contrasted some historic Florentine framed prints with an avant garde lighting piece. The exposed brick wall was perhaps the only characteristic element that already came with the apartment, but we had a bit of a job to dust and seal it, which is necessary with such ancient masonry. But once again, we married it with an entirely antique finish, with a vintage decorative fireplace, to create a new focal point for the room directly opposite the large window overlooking the terrace and therefore rationalizing the sense of placement for the grand antiqued mirror, which not only directly reflected the greenery of the outside, but also beamed in maximum amount of natural light, particularly since being located on the ground floor required every trick in the book to enhance. We used a basic design program to help us hone the most ergonomic way to improve the furniture layout, and many of the character pieces we actually sourced locally at second-hand stores, or at the Great Antique Market at the town of Arezzo. Video to that linked at the end of this video, where I dive into all the amazing treasures that you can find hidden away in rural Tuscany. We capped off the finishing touches with a little ceiling rosone, although perhaps it could have been a bit bigger, and a three-seater sofa bed, along with two antique Savona roller chairs, and we added some contemporary cushions to help soften and harmonize the furniture. Let's venture out to the final part of this tour, where at first we find the bathroom beyond a little gallery space that we created to help give the corridor some additional value. This bathroom renovation was really a matter of creating a less is more kind of space, and we only changed three elements. Can you spot which? The shower itself was of course the main thing that needed a new lease of life. When removing the old tower though, we encountered some tile damage which we had no budget to replace, but we solved this by placing some new wall mounted soaps. The other element was to pull out that grossly oversized sink and replace it with something more ergonomic for the narrow space. Finally, a more elegant light and mirror element was added, with everything feeding off of this new bamboo theme which helped warm up this previously spartan space in a way which worked well with the existing tiling. And last but not least, the bedroom. This is the space which we did the least, but as you can see from how it looked before, just a few changes can go a huge way. After selling the bed frame, we created a charcoal feature wall where the headboard would go and a slight ladder in paint faux pas aside, it went pretty quickly. We added some modern brass applique lights which cast some interesting geometric shadows and put together the grand Chesterfield star headboard. Some marble and brass bedside tables later, we were pretty much done, but it's here that I want to direct your attention to the window as it was before whereas with this one, they all had floor space absorbing draped curtains. After discussing with the clients, we pushed the boat out to get a carpenter to create bespoke traditional shutters throughout, which not only reintroduced a lost historical feature, but freed the space from around the windows entirely. And so, it's time to talk about just how far your money can go to buy, renovate, and even sell at a profit a property of this type in central Florence. But before we do, please help out my channel by commenting, sharing, and hitting that subscribe button, which enables me to keep producing this kind of content for YouTube for free. We'll begin with the purchase price, which clocked in at 205,000 euros after a bit of negotiation back in early 2019. Bear in mind that there's an around 5,000 euro fee for such a property for the bureaucracy to process the whole deal. And if you're a foreign buyer, you'll want to hire someone like us to act as a legal proxy, to arrange all of the Italian bureaucratic filings, to confirm the integrity of the property with the surveyor, and to navigate the language barrier generally. This would set you back around another five to 10,000, depending on the project. 
As for this particular renovation, which kept to a fairly modest budget, the total material cost was around 7,000 euros, and actually it would have been even a fraction of that had we not needed to reinstate features like the air conditioning and the shutters. We did all of the labour ourselves, since the level of interventions were pretty light, and to maximise the budget, but we typically charge a fair but separate additional fee for the design and implementation of any renovation for a client. All in, your final purchase and renovation cost for a project such as this brings you to around 220 to 225,000 euros. Our clients embarked on this project with the view to spending a few weeks or months out of the year in Florence, and to rent out the apartment to the tourist market the rest of the time. Being such a well-located and styled space, particularly with the feature of the urban oasis, allowed the property to rent for around 100 euros per night, with around a 90% occupancy rate. Of course, you'd need to subtract cleaning, management and utility fees, but it generated a nice income which was able to pay off the entire renovation cost in less than a year. But what about the sale price? Well, as you might have guessed, all of these figures came from the pre-Covid world, where the apartment was bought at a time when the market was much higher. Our clients got a good year of enjoying and renting out the property before Covid hit, but throughout the subsequent year of them seldom being able to travel, they decided to test the sale price of the property in early 2021, despite the market being incredibly deflated at the time thanks to the new waves of Covid. In a market like Florence, which depends a lot on foreign investment and a buoyant local economy, we were surprised to get valuations from across the board for around 245,000 euros, with the caveat that if our clients were to wait until Covid had passed, the value could even reach 270,000, as would have been its immediate value increase had Covid never arrived. It is typical for listing prices to be negotiated down ever so slightly in Italy, and of course market conditions are always subject to change as we found out during this project. But it was great to know that when my clients chose to sell, we'd added enough value that even in the worst case at the bottom of the Covid-stricken market, they'd more than recoup everything they'd put into it. So what do you think? Would you want to invest in Italy one day? Do bear in mind in the comments below the short-term nature of the stays intended by the clients of this property, which thus informed our design in making things like the kitchenette rather contained. But that said, I'd love to hear what you think of our aesthetic, this passion that we have for mixing old and contemporary elements. But for now, and from the loving embrace of Florence, arrivederci.